Well, it's November the 8th, and here's another day full of opportunity to continue growing in grace of God. And an area of our life which can harass us is sin. Um, and today we're discussing the simple question, profound. Is grace a license to sin? To do what you wish? Based on Romans 6, verse 1 and 2, which I'll just read from the Message Bible. So what do we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign, how can we still live in our old house there? Didn't you realise we packed up and left for good? That is what happened in baptism. Hmm. So, we want to discuss what does it mean if we persist in a lifestyle of sin. I don't mean falling here and there with sins, but I mean a persistent lifestyle of sin. We're going to raise three points. Um, I'll name them now, uh, just as, as headings. Grace abuse, in Christ, dead to sin. Okay, one by one. So, first of all, some misunderstand grace as a, a blanket cover for wrongs that give us a free license to sin. So they continually take advantage of God's forgiveness. Uh, the reason, well, the more we sin and are forgiven, the more it magnifies God's grace, after all. Now, this would be like a, a beggar refusing to work, saying, I'm giving the government an opportunity to demonstrate the generosity of their social security payments. Grace is no more a license to sin than electricity is a license to electrocute yourself. Secondly, first, grace abuse and misunderstanding. Secondly, are we in Christ? A, a lifestyle of persistent, serious sin calls into question whether someone was ever saved in the first place. They may profess Christ, but do they possess Christ? Romans 8 1 says, There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And 2 Corinthians 13 5 follows up, Were they ever truly in Christ? Yeah, check that out for yourself. That's the test. Are we in Christ? The third, I know we're only touching on these at the moment dead to sin. Romans 6, 1 and 2 that we read initially. So what do we do? Keep on sinning so that uh, God can keep on forgiving? We read that from the Message Bible. But it raises the question, how can we, the very ones who died to sin, continue to live in it any longer? When it says died to sin, get a bit um, grammatical I guess the tense is the aorist in the Greek it indicates a, a decisive happening at the point of salvation we died to Adam as head and were raised to life in Christ as our new head new family this is the new realm with a new heart nature and identity so, for example, if a sheep falls into, into the mud, it's her nature to struggle to get out. However, if a hog gets into the mud, he wallows in it, for it's his nature to stay there. Our new nature changes our attitude towards sin and the, and the one who paid for our sin. The issue here is uh, not a, uh, occasional sin but willful sin as a pattern of life. So just to review those points, if we're, if we're stuck in a habitual sin, it 
just raises um, questions but that you ask yourself no one's wagging the finger at you first do do we have a true grasp of what grace really means it does not mean doing as I like unless of course the new nature really likes to please Christ secondly it raises the question where we in Christ to begin with or was Christ just a doctrine a teaching and thirdly um, have we died to sin are we given that old life it's death knell and now we raise the life in Christ now these are not just theoretical issues these by Holy Spirit pan out in a Christian's life so Jesus Christ not only died for our sins plural our individual actions and emotions and thoughts that are awry but our sin the principle our identity in Adam um, we'll have to develop this tomorrow because it's a bigger subject so tomorrow we'll develop on November the 9th uh, this idea of life and death um, from Adam's family to Christ's family thanks for listening and meditating along with me. Okay, bye for now.